Hey guys, how's it going? Owen Thomas here from Owen Thomas Woodcraft. Uh, welcome back to my workshop. So today uh, I'm pretty excited because I'm going to start building a couple of pole lathes for bowl turning. Um, and I thought I would do a tutorial video on how to make them, which will hopefully help some of you guys out um, who want to start getting into bowl turning. Uh, or maybe it's, maybe you're someone who does a bit already, but maybe your lathe isn't quite uh, how you want it. Maybe you'll be able to pick up a few tips from this. Uh, so let's get cracking. Right, let's get started. We're first going to have a look at the making the bed and the poppets, which were the uh, the poppets are the upright parts uh, that hold the centers in place. Um, so to make these bits, you can see behind me, I've got two lengths of uh, 12 inch by three inch uh, Douglas fir, um, or th 300 by 75 millimeters. Um, I actually bought this in a full length, so it's a 3.2 meter length, uh, which is a pretty standard size that you can get from uh, most sawmills. Um, and I've cut that in half, so they're each 1.6, uh, meters and this the this is a good size uh, I find for it for a lathe it's not uh, you don't want to make it too wide um, because then you've just got a load of unnecessary uh, sp space on each end um, but also if you make it too short you can sometimes come uh, come a bit stuck if you're trying to start turning larger bowls for example uh, it will take up more space um, what we're going to do for the one uh, the one that's going to be the bed is we're going to cut a big slot in the middle that the poppets um, fit into. So you get well the, the 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 length of your the length of the slot dictates how much you can fit in between the centres, um, obviously. Um, so let's get cracking. So I'm just going to have a quick look at these boards uh, to decide what I'm going to do with which one. Um, you have to be careful for um, any knots close to the edge, um, especially on the one that's going to be your bed. So I'm probably going to choose this one um, to form the bed piece because we're probably going to be we're going to be cutting a slot out of the middle here. Um, and that, so that knot's going to go, but the edges are nice and clean. Um, this one we're going to cut in half again, and that's going to make the uprights, the, uh, the poppets, sorry. Um, that's not so crucial um, to have nice strong wood on the edge because uh, they're just going to be um, big blocks. Um, so I'm going to show you how to, or I'm going to show you how I mark out these and uh, we'll get to making a slot. Right, we're going to start um, marking in from the end. Now you need to leave a nice uh, nice big area at the end because this is the part where we're going to fit the legs through and also uh, the uprights um, for, the, uh, for the bungee cord assuming that you're going to be using bungee cord obviously if, you, if you're going to be using a traditional pole then you don't need to um, do that part of this. But uh, we need at least 12 inches, uh, 300 mil um, at the end. I'm gonna put a mark there. Mark straight across with my square. And do the same on the other end. So we're just trying to match uh, match each end. All right. So now we've got our uh, end points. We need to mark the width. So what I um, try to do, try to do is have a, at least a three-inch uh, tenon on the poppets, 
um, this gives it a, uh, you know gives it enough strength to hold uh, to hold it nice and tight when we when we knock the wedges in. Um, so what we want for the for the slot is a slightly over three inch uh, gap. So uh, got to mark got to mark the center point, uh, which is about there. So I'm going to go for a three and an eighth um, slot. Should mean that we are about equal, both uh, equal amount of material left both sides. Um, I know I'm mixing my measurements um, quite a lot. I hope it's not too confusing for you guys. Um, the reason being. Um, I, when I trained as a joiner, I worked with a lot of old guys who were used to uh, using the imperial measuring system. Um, but all the machinery and all our rulers were in metric. Um, so in my mind, I'm quite used to um, chopping and changing to whatever suit, you know, uh, whatever the closest measurement is. Uh, so I hope you guys are following. Um, if not, it's not it's not too difficult to uh, to Google um, what the uh, uh, it's not too difficult to Google what the conversion is. Um, but as I said, I'll do my best to try and um, remember to do to to say in both metric and imperial because I know I know I've got a, I've got a lot of American followers who don't understand the metric system. Um, and a lot of Europeans who will get confused by the imperial system. So just for clarification, uh, we've got a three and an eighth inch here, which is about 80 mil, eight centimeters. Um, and we've got 105 millimeters on either side. Hopefully that combination is gonna make sense to all of you. I'm just going to put a mark in the middle as well because um, I don't have a long enough ruler to um, go the whole span. So I'm just going to join up these marks and then we can get to the fun bit which is going to be the sawing. So we're losing all that. We're losing most of this knot here as well, which is good. That's how I planned it. Yeah, let's get to knocking this hole out. Just as a quick note uh, before I saw this hole, um, I'm going to be using power tools to do it. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are in, in the green woodwork world who are purists. And if you want to be using hand tools, you can obviously do all of this with hand tools. Um, but I'm having to make four of these for an event that I'm teaching at. Um, so I don't have the time really um, to do it all with uh, hand tools. Um, I'm not going too mad. I'm just using a, a circular saw um, for cutting this, for cutting the, the slot out. And I'm going to obviously use a use a use a power drill to drill some of the holes, um, apart from the larger ones. But to my mind, there's nothing really wrong with that. Like you get the you get the uh, same thing out at the end. I guess you could probably say that for electric lathe versus pole lathe as well. 
Um, difference being with that though, there's some very stark differences with uh, the tools you use, uh, how the how the bowl looks at the end of it. So like the tool marks. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to uh, convey the easiest way um, of making a pole lathe really. Um, I'm not too fussed about uh, at this stage about the the purity of just using hand tools. But if you do, fair play to you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be using a circular saw. Uh, you can of you can also do this with a chainsaw, um, but because I'm working inside and the weather's not great at the moment, um, I find a circular saw more accurate and less messy. Now we've got the slots, uh, the sides of the slots cut. We've got to look at uh, cutting the ends out. Um, there's a few ways of doing this. The way I'm going to do it is to do what we call stitch drilling, which is um, drilling a bunch of holes really close to each other uh, to remove a load of material, then using a chisel to knock out uh, the remainder so we can remove that uh, middle piece uh, in one big block. Um, alternatively to that, what you could do is use a jigsaw, um, but I don't have one, so I'm not going to use that. Um, you could also use a, a, a big frame saw if you have one, but again, I haven't got one. Um, so I'm just making do with what I have. Um... <laughs>
right, now we've cut the slot out, um, put that piece to one side because we're going to use it later uh, in the build. Um, and now's a good point to um, maybe chamfer off all your corners because you you know you want to get uh, want to get rid of any sharp points uh, areas you might get splinters from while you're using it. Um, if you want to, you, it's a good time also to um, plane down the tops if you want to. Like, I don't normally bother um, unless there's a really uh, a really rough spot. Um, I normally just leave it the sawn face, um, but I do always take the corners off because those are those are points where you can catch yourself quite easy. Um, so I normally chisel, I chisel around the uh, slot, and then the edge, the outside edges, including the ends, I do with a plane. Um, so I'm going to do that now, um, and then we'll uh, then that bit will be done for the moment, and we'll start looking at making the poppets. Right, that should be the bed all done for, for now. Obviously, we've still got to drill the holes um, for the legs and the uprights, but we're going to have a look at the sorting out the poppets now. Um, so, hopefully, your other uh, 1.6 meter bit of timber is still intact. Um, what we want to do for this is to actually rip this down um, so it's 12 inches at the moment, 300 mil, um, and we want to get it down to 8 inches or about 200 mil. Um, this is partly because you don't really need the poppets to be the full width of the bed, um, but also it gives us um, an extra bit of timber that we can make some other parts of the lathe from. Um, so pick your best side. Um, I'm going to rip it down so we have an 8 inch block and about a 4 inch. So now we've ripped down the length of timber for the poppets, what we need to do is uh, mark them to length so we can get two poppets out of this one bit. So remember this should be around uh, 1.6 meters, 63 inches, which it is. Um, so we're gonna, from one end, we're gonna mark out 29 inches 74 at uh, 740 millimeters 74 centimeters um, so this is going to give us one uh, poppet higher than the other which is what we want because one of them has a right angled center and the other side is set into the face of the poppet so we want one slightly higher than the other um, once you've established this mark, this middle mark, we'll call it the middle for sake of argument, um, we will mark in from the ends. Mark in from the ends. About 30 centimeters. 12 inches. So we're going to mark in from the end uh, to about 30 centimeters, 12 inches, and then square a line across. So this is going to be the uh, shoulders of the of the tenon that we're going to cut. Follow the lines round the side as well, because we're going to have to cut. Uh, we're going to have to cut this in nice and square, so we need lines all the way around. So we can follow them, so we get a nice square cut. I'm not sure what that mark's there for, but 
get rid of it just so I don't get confused. Right, as for marking the tenon, what we need to do is mark our center. And then remember we cut a slightly over three inch slot in the bed. So we want a three inch uh, tenon here. So if we mark an inch and a half each side of that center line and then join them up, we should be at the right size. So you're probably asking yourself, why am I marking out the tenons? while the uh, length of timber is still in one piece. And that is simply because it's a lot easier to clamp um, the long bit to my trestles and then rip, rip along the tenons um, in one big bit um, than it is to um, have the smaller bits. There's a lot more weight there. There's a lot more area I can um, fit the clamps around. Doesn't really make um, I guess it doesn't really make much much odds how you want to do it. This is, as with everything else, it is just like how I do it um, rather than the way you have to do it. Um, so I'm going to get to um, ripping down the tenons. So because I'm a massive cop out, um, I do all my ripping with a circular saw, but for the shoulders of the tenons, I always use a handsaw. Um, it's because I feel like I'm a lot more accurate with it, and it's fairly important that you get these nice and square. Um, I do have quite a lot of experience. Um, if, well, if you saw my first video, you know how long I've been doing woodwork, so I guess I do have that advantage over some people. Um, but yeah, the, like I said, this is this is my this is my way of doing it. There are other ways available. Um, so I'm going to get uh, cutting these shoulders now, um, and then after that, we will look at fitting them to the bed. Make sure they sit nicely. Right, so now we've got the shoulders cut for the poppets. Uh, I'm gonna try them in the slot, make sure they fit okay. So when you're checking them, just make sure that they, uh, they can slide all the way from one end to the other. Uh, make sure there's no, uh, no um, narrow points where they're going to pinch. Um, if there are narrow points, um, my suggestion would be to, um, rather than try and widen the slot, would be to try and remove some material from the side of the tenon. Um, it's just because it's a lot easier, a lot less, lot less fiddly. Uh, you could either run a saw, um, take a really small saw cut off of the edge of the tenon, uh, or you could plane it or chisel it. Um, that would be up to you um, if you find yourself in that situation. Right guys, that's going to be it for this part of the video. Um, I'm going to do it in a few sections just because um, people on YouTube hate long videos. Um, I'm trying to keep, I'm going to cover everything obviously, but um, I'm going to split it into a few parts. I'm not sure yet. I just, Depend, I guess it depends on how uh, how much footage I have at the end of it. So I'll try and knock them down into maybe sort of 20, 25 minute um, sections. And then if you're, as you're, as you're working, you can just, uh, as you're working, making one of your lathes, um, you can just pick the one that's most relevant to what you're doing uh, rather than having to trawl through a whole long video. 
Right, thanks guys for tuning in. Um, I'll be back shortly with the next part. Um, if you haven't already, please give me a like and a subscribe. That'd be fantastic. I really appreciate everybody who has already uh, given me a like and a subscribe. Um, yeah, catch you soon. Stay sharp, stay positive.